This film is about chemical reactions and their characteristics. Chemical reactions occur in a variety of ways. Some reactions bang, others bubble, and yet some reactions are hardly visible at all. All chemical reactions have starting materials, reactants, from which new substances, or products, arise. These have different characteristics than the starting materials. If, for example, sulphur is heated together with iron in a test tube, the two substances react to form iron sulphide. Not only does its appearance indicate that the resulting black iron sulphide is a new substance, but other characteristics also prove that in this chemical reaction, a new substance has been formed. Such a production of a new substance is also referred to as synthesis. However, one factor does not change in the reaction. The total mass. The product of a chemical reaction has the same mass as the starting materials had. To verify this, the test tube is sealed in a balloon so that the experiment can take place in a closed system. The test tube is weighed before and after the reaction. The result? The mass remains the same. This is called the law of conservation of mass. In all chemical reactions, there is also a change in energy. If zinc and sulphur powders are mixed together and this mixture is then slightly heated, the two substances react to form zinc sulphide. Thus, energy is released. This occurs when high energy reactants are transformed into low energy products. These are exothermic reactions. In the same way, reactions in which energy is absorbed are called endothermic reactions. If, for example, ammonium chloride is dissolved in water, the temperature of the water decreases. This is because energy is required for the ammonium chloride to react with the water. Most exothermic reactions do not occur on their own. The starting materials react with one another only if energy is supplied. Once it has been started, the reaction then carries on releasing energy. The amount of energy required to start an exothermic reaction is called the activation energy. Various factors determine how fast a reaction occurs. One of them is the concentration of the substances involved. How the concentration of the substances affects the rate of a reaction can be observed in the reaction of diluted hydrochloric acid with zinc. These three containers are filled with hydrochloric acid in different concentrations. Now the same amount of zinc is placed in each container. Initially, almost nothing is happening in the container with the least concentrated hydrochloric acid. In the second container, some gas formation can be observed. However, in the container with the highest concentration of hydrochloric acid, the reaction starts immediately. The higher the concentration of the reactants involved, the faster the reaction begins. Another factor that influences the reaction rate is the degree of dispersion. Its influence can also be observed in the reaction of hydrochloric acid with zinc. These three containers are now filled with hydrochloric acid of the same concentration. Zinc is added in different degrees of dispersion. With the compact piece of zinc, almost hardly any reaction can be observed. Zinc grains result in a stronger reaction, as seen in the formation of gas. An immediate reaction, however, only occurs when zinc powder is mixed in with the hydrochloric acid. The higher the degree of dispersion, and thus the surface of the substances, the faster the reaction. Finally, the reaction rate also depends on the temperature. If hydrochloric acid is mixed into a solution of sodium thiosulfate, cloudiness or turbidity can be observed. This is due to the finely divided sulphur precipitating. By way of comparison, the same substances will be mixed again. However, this time, they have previously been heated in a water bath. The solution becomes turbid much quicker. 
The higher the temperature, the faster the reaction occurs. Thus, the form of any chemical reaction strongly depends on the starting materials transformed in the reaction.